This video is the second in a series addressing the recoil associated with spring piston air guns. Today we'll be discussing piston bounce versus piston slam. You may have noticed in the first video that the piston rebounded just before it reached the end of its stroke. This is typical and is the result of the high pressure cushion of air which is trapped between the piston and the pellet. The problem with this bounce is that the rearward movement of the piston reduces the pressure behind the pellet. The further the piston travels rearward, the more the pressure ahead of it will drop, reducing pellet energy. Additionally, the longer the piston travels rearward, the longer the recoil impulse will be, adding to hold sensitivity. The alternative is a piston which doesn't bounce at the end of the stroke. This is called piston slam. In this case, the piston's forward movement is arrested by contact with the end of the compression chamber rather than a cushion of air. While this can prevent the pressure reduction associated with bounce, the sudden and violent stop of the piston has some rather critical side effects. The first being a more intense recoil movement away from the shooter. While the sudden stop of the piston increasing this recoil seems obvious, there is more going on here than you might think. The sudden stop of the piston also produces a shock wave along the length of the spring, resulting in fatigue which will ultimately result in premature failure. Generally, piston bounce is preferred over piston slam due to the reduced risk of premature spring failure and harsh recoil. For this reason, air gun manufacturers tend to design their spring air gun power plants accordingly. Over the past 10 years or so, there has been a big push towards higher velocity numbers out of spring air guns. The power figures advertised are typically produced using ultralight pellets, something which air gun manufacturers used to warn against. Given this move to lighter pellets and higher velocities, what impact do you think this has had on piston bounce and how is it countered by the manufacturers? We'll discuss this in the next video when we take a look at the variables which can produce piston bounce.